Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So you have tech billionaire A, Elon Musk, uh, possibly the most hated tech billionaire. So he's hiring people now. He put out a post on his platform and I quote, if you're a hardcore software engineer and want to build the everything app, please join us by sending your resume, by sending your best work to code at x.com. We don't care where you went to school or even whether you went to school or what big name company you worked at. Just show us your code. So Elon Musk runs his companies like uh, an entrepreneur where it's very uh, rubber meets the road type of mentality as opposed to credentials. I'm a bootstrapper in terms of uh, building tech, little tech companies that I've built over the years. And as such, you're forced to, not forced, but what you learn when you hire people but the credentials are not that important. It's what they can do. So I always hire based on credentials. And Elon Musk is just, runs his companies, his huge companies, just like a startup would. So that's lesson number one. Uh, skills trumps everything. That's what I've been saying for many, many years. Uh, your credentials are worth this much and your demonstrable skills are worth that much. So that's why if you're learning to code, just start building things, even simple things. You know, when you first start fighting, you don't want to get into the ring with Mike Tyson your first fight, right? You want to get in the ring with cream puffs, you know, little puppies and kittens, things that are easy to beat. And then you build up your skills. Same thing with Cody. You start with simple things. Anyhow, so on the flip side, you got Mark Zuckerberg, who is um, now looking to lay off people. He said in a recent post that, or, or interview rather, that uh, he believes that by... Sometime in 2025, AI will be able to replace certain mid-level engineers. Although he, he put a little star beside it, a little asterisk. And the asterisk was, um, it takes a lot of energy for it to happen. So there's a big debate now whether how accurate that is. I think it's hype. I think it's hype. I think he's, uh, you got to understand, when you got these business owners, especially the tech billionaires, they know how to operate business-wise. Say So they will say certain things to drive um, the money in one direction or the other. No doubt that AI is going to play a bigger role in development, and you should learn AI. Not, be, not necessarily become an AI developer, although you could if you want, but just leverage it in your day-to-day -day work, whether you are writing Java or C Sharp or not Ruby or PHP, whatever. Start exploring how AI could speed up your workflows. As I've said many times before, I have seen this game before where a new technology comes out and changes the way developers work. Let me emphasize that. It changes the way developers work. It doesn't remove developers. It removes certain developer jobs, but usually, well, I've seen always to date new jobs and many new jobs come into place. And I'm already starting to see it. I have a friend of mine who has an AI-based business and he's basically offering a custom AI solution for his clients, and he delivers this via web app. So uh, although the AI is speeding up his own processes, he still has to have highly trained, highly capable developer types working for him as they build out the business. So yes, boiler coat code writers, will those jobs become much less because AI can do that. But you're still going to need a lot of people to uh, implement uh, new technologies, to put together uh, software, to, but to, to put together systems. Remember, as a developer, uh, only a part of your job is actually writing the code. As I said, I have seen technologies disrupt the software development industry in profound ways in the past. So the biggest and most obvious is the web. Prior to the web, which started gaining, gaining a lot of steam in 95. The way software was developed was thick client software. It was uh, delivered on disk or CD-ROMs and DVD-ROMs, and people created thick client applications. For small business development, it was dominated by uh, VB6, VB5, VB6 development. That all disappeared, all gone. Did it destroy the job market? You know, did the job market diminish? No, it actually grew incredibly large, much larger, uh, because the web enabled a whole bunch of new business opportunities that did not exist before. 
just as I believe the AI will allow for a lot of opportunities. So I was talking to somebody on a mentoring call a few, well, it was last week, I think it was, and they were telling me how they were taking, they used leverage, they leveraged AI to build an app that uh, they were able to build the app in about three months. And they said, without AI, it would have taken them a year. So people who are thinking wrongly will be saying to themselves, oh my God, oh my God, all those jobs, all those jobs are gone, right? Because it would have been a year of work as opposed to just three months. You could look at it that way, but that would be the wrong way. The way you got to look at it is that all of a sudden, a small startup can produce an app for a fraction of the cost, a quarter of the cost, and uh, hit the market running. So that means that startups, new companies, new ventures will be able to compete in ways that they couldn't compete because AI is making them far more productive. I have seen this, again, in the past when certain technologies came out that allowed uh, people like me who bootstrap companies to be able to actually do things that they could not do before. This is huge. Social media is like that as well, right? Social media and the web allows you to get out there and get your word, get the word out there about your business without having to spend huge money on TV and newspaper ads. In the past, if you wanted to reach 100,000 people, it would cost you a huge amount of money. Now you can do it you know, pretty easily with social media. So this is all good. Of course, the newspapers have gotten hit really hard and they're almost, you know, they're done. Magazines are done. Uh, now TV news is, is getting killed now. But that's okay because we're seeing a much broader market in the new media space. So if you want to cling on to 1990 way of, think, of thinking, of doing things, yes, you're going to have troubles. But if you think about what's going to happen over the next two, three years and further, then there's a huge opportunity. Whenever there is disruption in any industry, that allows for a huge opportunity. This is a great thing. This is a great thing. The last thing you want is a stagnant technology base or a stagnant economy where the major players have total dominance and there's no room for new people to jump in. This will create a huge opportunity. You just have to jump into it. So think about that aforementioned uh, new startup I, I just spoke to the, the founder where they were able to produce an app in three months instead of 12 months. Fantastic. That's pretty productive, right? They basically uh, they decreased their, caught their time by 75%. It's pretty damn good with AI. But you know what? I've seen things far more productive. I talked about this in the past. Many years ago, in I think it was 96 or 97. No, it was 96. And I was approached by a company who had a, a, an early social network. And in this social network, they were built with the, the way, it was a web app, and it was built the way web apps were built largely at the time, using Perl CGI, uh, where the code, the view code and the logic were all interwoven, poorly structured, you know, Java did it with servlets, et cetera. So Microsoft comes in with this brand new paradigm in which you would create web apps, and that was the page-based paradigm. So it was ASP, Active Server Pages. Later on, all the other platforms copied it. JS, Java had JSP and so on. Code Fusion came out. Anyway, the point is, is that this new tech, this new way of building web apps and apps was so so much more productive that I was able to take this project and rebuild it from scratch, from scratch, having never used this technology before. And I was able to build something that the previous company took over a year to do and it was so buggy. The company decided to hire me because the old contractor just couldn't get it to work properly. So anyway, I was able to build it from scratch with the new ASP technology. I was able to do it in one month. It took them over a year and they still couldn't get it to work. I was able to do it in a month while learning PHP <laughs> at the same time. And uh, not that I'm a genius programmer. No, it's just that that technology, the ASP technology, was literally 12 times more productive. 12 times. I was able to do it in one month what the previous guys took over a year to do. And mine worked right away. So what does that tell you? Huge productivity gains with the page-based paradigm huge, massive, and uh, didn't kill any jobs. It just shifted the careers. We went from interwoven model one, as they used to call it, uh, where the view code and the logic were all interwoven together, you know, uh, servlets, it's Perl CGI, etc. 
And we went to the page-based paradigm where you see active server pages, Java server pages, PHP even, et cetera, and so forth. It all went that way. And that was a hyper-productivity game. And I could go on and on and on, many examples of that. Why do I mention all this? Because, you know, people are getting a little, they're having kittens, they're getting a little worried about losing their jobs. You know, I'm telling you, it's an opportunity. So Zuckerberg now is saying, it uh, looks like they're going to be firing more people. I think a lot of people are firing because they changed their policy in terms of content. So they're going to go to a community notes thing. Now, some people, this is very pol political, but that, costs a lot, that cuts a lot of cost, right? All of a sudden, they don't have to have all these people uh, monitoring everything. So they're just going to let the community do it. You may hate it. You may like it, whatever. That's not the point. The point is, that's a big reason why they're probably going to be able to fire a bunch of people, just like X did. And um, he's also said, Zuckerberg, that they're going to re replace mid-level developers. Yeah, if, if you have this much work to do at, at Facebook right now, and you're able to uh, use AI to, to be four times more productive, yes, it stands to reason that uh, you won't need to hire as many or may have to, you may be able to fire some of the low-level engineers who are not very productive. This is a temporary thing. You know, I think, if it was Reed Hoffman, I think the Salesforce guy said the same thing. They're not going to hire any new developers. They're saying that now. Give it six, six months, see what happens. But what this does is creates all kinds of opportunities, right? Instead of you having to scale up like a Facebook to compete uh, with the big boys, you can do it super quickly and efficiently with AI tool sets. So for you as a developer, you should tool up in terms of AI, start playing around with ChatGPT or any of the AI tools that are out there to help you code. Start playing around with them. Start working with them. You know, you don't necessarily need to take a course. Just start playing with it. Say, I want to write some boilerplate code. I don't know. I want to write uh, a three-column layout view. You know, or, you know, create a simple template uh, with uh, Bootstrap. Whatever it is you you want you want to do, uh, React code. Just start playing with it. Ask the AI to write some code that you may write and see what happens. And you'll find that uh, it will save you time. It won't be perfect, but it will save you time. And I was talking to some friends of mine who are active developers, have been using GPT for a while now, and they say that it saves them. Some have told me 10% of their time. Some people said as much as 25, 30% of their time. So it depends. And again, I spoke to the startup last week, and they're saying they were able to do something in three months, which would have took them a year. They're not complaining. They're not complaining. They're just able to, to produce uh, code much more quickly and better code. That's something else I noticed. With AI coding, you're just going to basically see the code get better much faster, which means the apps are going to get better much faster. It just means we're going to have a huge productivity boost in terms of uh, how good the apps are. I remember back in the 90s with the much more primitive systems, it took a long time to get something done. Because... You had, to, you had to write all this plumbing code. You had to write all this scaffolding code from scratch. It was a, I, remember, I remember being on projects and I'd be, uh, we'd be bellyaching about why don't the browsers produce, uh, have a data object? Why doesn't the browsers have a simple sorting capability? Why don't, why don't the browsers have a better layout engine built in? Because we used to waste so much time doing these common tasks that everybody had to do over and over again. And sure enough, it's come out. It's since come out. So, you know, trust me, I welcome not having to write that code anymore. We were able to produce much better web apps today in a fraction of the time because we have all this uh, this layer of support in the, in, in the libraries and so forth. So AI is just an extension to that. So there you go. So Zuckerberg, it, it, you know, he's basically later in the cycle versus Elon Musk in terms of... Uh, optimizing his workforce. So he's firing people, I think, this year. I think it's going to be all the, uh, all the guardrail people, all the, all the people, uh, the hall monitor people. And then he says he's going to freeze the development. But, you know, look at Elon. Elon's got one of the biggest AIs in the world, and they're hiring developers. Like They just put out the word, as I said. They're looking for coders and developers. Again, if you're worried about it, yes, some jobs will disappear, just like the pro CGI code writers and the servlet, uh, the classic servlet model one code writers, uh, their jobs disappeared, but they pivoted into other coding paradigms and other things, just as, as I did. Again, prior to the web, VB6 was dominant for small business app development. Now nobody writes VB6. 
66. Well, I'm sure it's probably a few people, but you get the idea. So don't worry about it. There, don't worry about it. I'm Michael Steph. I've been in the software game professionally since the 90s. So I've seen all the trends. So I just, I'm on here to help people out to understand and navigate the coding world from a professional perspective. Um, I have a mentoring program for brand new people, brand new to code, link below, and people who want to level up their coding game. And I got a new mentoring program strictly on entrepreneurship and business. Again, something I've been doing longer than I've been a coder. I've been a coder for 30 years. So I think I can help a bunch of you guys out. Check it out. Uh, if you go to unclestats.com, uh, what is it today? We're January 20th. Still working on the specifics for the entrepreneur mentoring program. Uh, but news is coming. News is coming. Cheers. Thank you.